All right, so welcome everybody. This is the second week. Um, I don't recognize hardly a single one of you, although I'm pretty sure some of you were here last week where we talked about uh, just a basic introduction to how do I build these worlds with um, using Unity and 3D Studio or Blender, uh, how do we organize our templates, that sort of stuff. This week we're going to be talking about how do I get Unity, how do I get it configured, how do I get the, the tools and the plugins that I need to build these worlds, and then once I've got all that stuff, how do I actually build something simple and upload it to um, Altspace and make it work? I'm going to try and cover all that. I think I have about 30 minutes of material left, give or take, uh, and then we'll open up the floor to uh, questions. And if it goes like it did last time, that'll kill the rest of the hour. So the first thing I want to send out to everybody, I want to bring everybody's attention, there's some useful links that you're going to need in order to um, produce these sorts of uh, spaces. Everybody right here is going to get a series of messages from one of my students. He's going to send each of you a message. You don't have to do anything with it. You can just close it as soon as you get it. But what that'll do is that'll leave that message listed under your past messages on altvr.com and you'll be able to go and get these links. So you don't have to worry about memorizing these links or copying them down. Uh, you should be getting them now from my student Marty. And Marty will let me know very quickly if that's not working for you. Oh, there's the first one. So that first one, the getting started, is the Altspace introduction on world building. It's got links to the um, the, the the plugin, the um, the uploader. It's also got some tutorials. It also has one of my videos linked on there. Um, there's a link to the Unity download archive which is what you'll have to have to get the right version of Unity. And getting the right version of Unity is very important. And then the last link is Unity's own set of tutorials. If you're absolutely new to Unity and you just want the basics, there's some very good tutorials on there. Fortunately, to build worlds in alt space, you don't have to know everything that Unity has to offer. You don't have to know a lot of the stuff like the, the networking and, and um, the different mechanisms that you would need to build a complete game. We're just packaging up some data that Altspace is going to be using. So the, the skill set that we need is a lot less than a complete game developer, so to speak. So a question that came up the other day that I realized was, was worth uh, addressing is, what kind of computer do I need to build these worlds? You're not going to be able to build worlds like this with your headset because you need software like Unity, but what exactly kind of PC do I need? Well, if you look at the exact PC requirements for Unity, they're pretty meager, right? All I need is something that will run DirectX 10 or higher, and then if I'm running on a Mac, all I need is iOS 9 or higher. Now, if you're on Windows, there's a utility called DirectX Diag, DX Diag. And you can either look for this, or if you know how to bring up a command line, you can just type in dxdiag at a uh, command line prompt, and it will bring up this window that will tell you pretty much everything about the, um, the power or lack thereof of your computer. This is my computer here, so you guys can see how many processors I've got, how much RAM I've got. You can also see I'm running DirectX version 12. So <clears throat> that is really all I need to run Unity. Now, if your machine can run alt space, it almost 100% can run Unity. Unity runs on very um, lean platforms. And sometimes I like to develop on a very baseline machine because then I know if my, if my end users are, are working with baseline equipment like this, that it's gonna perform well on their equipment. If I've got an absolute monster of a computer, and everything looks great and runs great on my machine, but my clients are running in a browser or they're running on older computers, then the people that I'm designing the software for, they're gonna have less than uh, a less than stellar experience. So sometimes it actually helps a lot to uh, design on a lower end machine so that you know that your end users are gonna get a, a reasonable experience. You want Unity 2019.2.12. 
And the only place you can get it is with the Unity Download Archives. Now, one of the links that you received is a link to the Unity Download Archive, which is this page, and it's got pretty much every release that Unity has ever come out with, or at least the recent ones. Now, technically, any flavor of 2019.2 should work. So 2019.3 should work. Uh, but 2019.12 is the only one that's been officially tested. That's the version that Altspace itself is built in. So that's the version that we need to use to compile our worlds and our kits to upload into Altspace. Now once I find the right version, I've got a couple of options here. I can download the installer for Windows, I can download the installer for Mac, or I can use this link to open up the link in Unity Hub. A Unity Hub is a, uh, an application that Unity has developed that allows you to manage your projects that you're building in Unity and also manage which versions of Unity uh, open up which projects. Um, it's, if you do a lot of work with a lot of different uh, directions with Unity, then you may find yourself in a situation where you have to maintain multiple versions of the software. Because I've got one project, well this is an Altspace project, so I have to build it in 2019.2 but this other project requires a special piece of hardware that requires, you know, a different version of Unity. Uh, we've got some equipment where I work that if we do anything with, we have to build everything with 20, Unity 2015. And we've got another piece of equipment in the lab that only supports Unity 2017. So it could be a hassle. But for Altspace 2019.2, .2, and sometimes you'll see it with a little F1 at the end, you can ignore the F1. Um, once I get that and I open that link and it starts installing, I'm going to see a window like this, right? And the one thing that's important to add, these are modules that I can add to, um, to Unity, and it'll download this, the required software for this. So if I want to build an application for uh, Apple, I can do that. If I want to build something for uh, the Windows Store, I can do that. Way down on this list, there's a Tizen. I can build something for a Tizen. I don't even know what a Tizen is. But I can build something for it with Unity if I want to. But the important thing is you want to make sure that you have Android build support checked. And you want to be able you want to have both Android SDK and NDK tools and the open JDK. That will give you everything that you need to build for Android, and you will be building for Android. Now the beautiful thing about this, previous versions of Unity, I would have had to get these Android tools as a separate process, and it would have taken a long time. And setting it up was non-trivial. But now Unity does it all by itself, and you're really better off letting Unity handle and manage the version of Android Studio that it uses and the Android tools rather than trying to muscle around with that yourself. This, is, this will save you a lot of headaches. Um, it is a pretty significant download. We're talking about 10 gigabytes just for this, this setup. Um, but once you've got it, you've got it, and um, that's hopefully a one-time thing, or a very infre infrequent thing, having to uh, set all that stuff up. Once I get Unity installed, this is the way Unity looks from a, um, a standard user layout. Now, it, it, it looks like a scary, complicated piece of software. There's a gazillion buttons all over it, and there's, there's sliders and color tabs and all these different windows, and it's scary at first. And the first time you look at it, it's going to be a little bit daunting. But don't sweat it because we're only going to be working with a few specific components of the Unity system itself. There's a lot of this stuff that, with, that we just don't have to worry about. On one side of the menu, I see what's in my scene. It's called the hierarchy. So you'll see a tab called hierarchy. And that's actually what I'm working with in the scene. That's this stuff, the, the, the lights, the geometry, the skybox, all of that stuff is designed in my scene. And I'll see a list of the objects that I have in my scene. The objects that are colored black only exist in the scene. I created them in the scene, and they only exist in the scene. The blue objects are references to objects that are on the disk in my project folder. And those are what's called prefabs. The way Unity works is I have a folder under my project folder called Assets. And inside that Assets folder are all the folders and all the files for all the media that I'm going to need to build my scene. My objects are in there, my materials are in there, my um, 
animations are in there, my sounds are in there. Uh, if I were building a game where I could write scripts, my scripts would be in there, my plugins would be in there, the alt space uploader goes in there. All that stuff goes in your assets folder in your project. Uh, Unity's always watching the asset folder. Anything that changes or anything that moves in the asset folder, and Unity's going to automatically update all those definitions in my project. What that means is, if I have a prefab in my scene that's referencing an asset in my project, that asset changes in my project, and it also changes in my scene because it's got that prefab link. There's a connection between the prefab in my scene and that asset in my project folder. And that's typically a good way to work. If I'm making changes to something that's in, say, this model, and I've got Unity open on one side, and I've got 3D Studio open up on another side, as I'm making changes to the models and the geometry, and I save those changes to my asset folder, I see those changes automatically appear in my scene if that prefab connection is good. Um, so that's a, that's a pretty convenient workflow. I don't have to re-import these packages. When I go back over to Unity, my changes are already in there. Has anybody got any questions on this so far? Okay, good. Give me just a second. I'm going to redecorate some of these. So now we get to the part where we're talking about the Altspace VR uploader. <clears throat> the uploader is an asset package that was generated um, by a gentleman I've never had the pleasure to meet named Anthony. Uh, he wrote the scripts, uh, assembled up the package, and put, made it available, so I hear. Um, the Altspace uploader is what we call an asset package, which means it's not an executable. When I download it, I get this file, and it's got the little Unity logo on it, but if I double click on it, it doesn't do anything. That's because it, all it is is a collection of data. It's a nice little package that we can install into Unity. So I can't really do anything with it until after I have Unity installed. Once I have Unity installed, then I can drag and drop the downloaded asset package into Unity, or I can bring it in by going to the, there's a folder up the top called Assets, and then I go to Import Package, and then right next to that will be an option for Custom Package. It'll ask me to browse to the package folder, and then it will include it into my Unity project. And what it does is it provides this neat little tool, and it's got some buttons all over it. <clears throat> and it allows you to, you can create, you can build, and you can upload both kits and templates from within Unity using this, if you have your Altspace credentials and a decent internet connection. Um, but there's ways around that if you have neither of those. And you want to do this first on an empty project. So usually what I do, if I know I'm going to build a new world for Altspace. I'll create an empty project, make an assets folder in there, and then at that point, I'll import my um, Altspace uploader before I've put anything in my project. And the reason I do that is because if I need to make any changes to this, I'm going to have to convert my project from Android to PC and back. And um, that step takes a long time. I hear from a lot of people, they talk about, man, I'm building my world, and I hit build, and it sits there, and just sits there, and just sits there, and just sits there. And it's likely nothing that's in the scene that's causing the problem. It may be something in your project folder that is causing the problem. The thing about building a version for PC and building a version for Android is that Unity goes through when it imports these, these models and these textures and these objects, and it, it 
sort of changes the way it treats these from a very deep software level in terms of you know compression or how the the resolution that I'll allow, allow a material to have uh, it'll treat those different based on whether I'm working on a PC or working on an Android. And in order to do that, it has to re-import everything. It has to step through the entire project, look at this picture, see what it is, maybe I do something to it, set it aside, go to the next one. Oh, this is a sound file. I have to read through this sound file and figure out what it is. And it has to go through this process for everything in the project folder every time you switch platforms. And that can take a long time. It's very, it can be really painful. So if I have a lot of assets um, in my project folder, switching platforms every time I build or every time I want to make a change to the uploader on one side or the other, that could be a very painful process. So you'll save yourself a lot of headache if you, before I've put anything else into my project, I put the alt space uploader into the project to make sure it's configured. Now. If you bring it into an empty project, and this is the first thing that I've done, there's probably nothing else to do because something else that the uploader does is it changes all of the important settings in Unity that you need to make it work right. There's lots of ways to break the upload. Um, if you go around fiddling with some of these settings, so by default, all of the settings are set right. But if something happens and a setting doesn't, I've, maybe one time in 10, one of the settings doesn't work just right for me and I have to go in on either the PC or the Android side and, and change one of these settings, but it's very, very rare. So if that's the first thing you do, it'll be a quick, it'll be an easy process, and uh, you won't have to worry about switching platforms just to make some changes. Now one thing that I'm going to be able to do with this is I have an option, both building kits and building templates to either build or build and upload. If I just do build, then it bundles up the asset bundle and it leaves it sitting in a zip file on my template. And then I have to walk over to altvr.com and then manually upload that template through the website. It's a two-step process. But if I hit build and upload and I've signed in with my altspace credentials into the uploader, after it builds either my template or my kit, it will go ahead and upload it to the appropriate space on altvr.com. It's simpler, it's a, one, it's a one mouse button process, but you don't get a whole lot of good feedback. If I do the two-step process, then I have an option to see if there's any errors when the build is going on, and then if the building completes, it can, the building can complete and there still be errors, then when I upload it into um, altvr.com, if that fails, it'll give me an error message and I'll be able to go, oh, duh, I put scripts in my template, that's why it failed. So if you're really confident, just build should work for you. But if you want a little bit more control and maybe a little more feedback over the process, I would do build and upload. Build and upload also leaves you with a zip file that you can archive if you want to. So maybe, uh, you know, if you make a change to your template and you completely screw everything up and you haven't made any backups online. If you keep uh, backups of these uh, zip files that this builds, you'll be covered. So, <clears throat> and then there's um, the whole discussion about Apple and Linux support, specifically for the Alt VR uh, uploader. The Alt Space uploader comes with a little utility called curl. And curl is what it uses to communicate with altvr.com. Sends off your credentials, downloads your list of templates, uploads your templates, all that stuff. Curl does not work. Well, I was about to say that curl doesn't work on any other platform but Windows, but that's not true. They only give you the Windows executable in the, um, in the asset package. There is a version of curl that works for um, both Apple and Linux. But modifying the package so that it works with that version of curl is non-trivial. It can be done, but it's non-trivial. What you're better off doing if you're on some platform like, like Apple or Linux is just using this in offline mode. You don't have to log in. You don't even have to have an account, really. But you don't have to log in to the Altspace VR uploader. But what that means is you won't have the option to build an upload. You can only build, and then you have to manually upload your files through the, uh, through the website. Otherwise, everything that the uploader does uh, works 
on any platform that Unity works on. So if you like working with Unity on Linux, you can build your worlds on Linux. If you like working with Unity on Apple, you can build your worlds on Apple. You just might have to go through that two-step build process. This is a good time to talk about some common problems that can happen with your kits, right? <clears throat> Let's say I build my template, I upload my template, I hop into it, and everything's black. Oh my god, I can't see anything. I can maybe I can hear something. I can maybe I can hear the the user interface if I mouse over it or if I hit it with my uh, with my cursors, but I don't see anything. If you can see the UI, right? So I can see the user interface, right? I see my menu and the menu works, but my world is completely black or I see the skybox and all of my stuff is invisible. It'll either be black or it'll be invisible depending on uh, how I did the skybox. But if I can see the user interface, and what that means is one of the settings that I told you that you didn't have to set got changed. And it's probably the stereo render mode under one side or the other is set wrong. And what's going on is your world loaded just fine and it's running just fine, but none of the uh, meshes are being rendered. That's why everything's invisible or black. If you, can't, if you can't see the user interface, then it's not a problem with the uploader or any of the Unity settings. You've just blown out the texture memory on your quest. Uh, you need to go back and scale down some of your texture sizes. Because um, that's what happens when, if I load up too many skyboxes or if I uh, make my textures way too big, if I blow out the texture memory on my quest, everything still works, it's just black. And the way to tell whether, which one of those has happened to you is whether or not you can see the user interface. If you blow out your texture memory, you will have no user interface. Um, you upload it, it works just fine, but it won't let you in. What you need to do is you need to come back over here and look at this thing. Build for Windows or build for Android. If I check only one of these, build for Windows or build for Android, then it'll only go through that process once. It'll only build for whichever side it wants and then that's all that will be in the asset package. If I upload that asset package, then I may only have a PC side, or I may only have an Android side, and if I try to get in with the other side, it'll say, I'd love to, but I can't let you in. Nice little red error message. And what that means is one side or the other is missing. One of these is probably unchecked. Now the reason they give you the option to build one or the other is so that I can make different versions of the world. By default, the way Unity compresses the textures on Android, it's going to generate a slightly smaller world on the Android side than it does on the PC side. This world, for instance, the PC side is 16 megabytes, the Android side is 14 megabytes. And that was just the default settings. I could go into the Android side and crank the compression down even more and make the Android side smaller, leaving the PC side alone. I could theoretically make the PC side completely different from the Android side. I could give the Android users a completely different experience in this world than the PC users. That might be a little strange when people start comparing notes, but it could be useful if you've got something like a lot of particle effects. Particle effects drag the quest down, especially when you're talking about different types of particles. And when we get to the section on particles, we'll talk about what makes a particle good and what makes a particle bad. But if I wanted to, I could have the PC side, particles galore, I don't care, sky's the limit, as many particles as I want. I, I don't have to care about that because the PC side, particles aren't that big a deal. Particles will kill a quest, so maybe my quest side, I've scaled the particles way down. Or maybe I've even taken out some of the particle emitters altogether. Those are the kind of things that you could do. But if I wanted to, I could make the PC side look completely different. I mean, lay it out differently, have different things happening in it, have different lighting, different materials. If that's the effect you're going for. Okay, so as I was saying up earlier, the build and upload doesn't always give you a lot of... Um, a lot of feedback, right? It will tell you if it failed. 
may not tell you why it failed. Um, but if it just fails for no reason, or if I'm doing the two-step process and alt, altvr.com tells me, hey, this file contains scripts in it, <laughs> rejects it, nice red error bar, everything. Um, one of the solutions is it might actually contain scripts. A lot of, depending on where you get your assets for, especially, uh, we're going to talk in a minute about the Unity Asset Store. If you get your assets from the Asset Store, um, that could be the culprit. There may actually be scripts in there. Another reason for, for getting this error message is you're using the wrong version of Unity. Now, if you've been following along with this, you've got the right version because you downloaded 2019.2, but 12. But maybe, maybe you didn't catch that part. Maybe you got the latest version of Unity thing and that's the best, and normally you'd be right. But if you're not using that version of Unity, you try to upload it to the website, it's going to tell you that you're using the wrong version of Unity. Or it's going to tell you you've got scripts. It'll flag you for having scripts, but what the real culprit is, is a uh, version incompatibility. Has anybody got any questions? Feel free to interrupt me with a question if I, if I ask you, if I say something that, that spurs a question. Um, I'm perfectly content completely derailing this conversation as long as where we go is, uh, is useful. As I was talking earlier, I've got the hierarchy in Unity, which is my scene, and then I've got the, um, the project folder, which is all of the things that could be in the scene. From a game playing perspective, you can sort of think of this as my scene being my level and my project being my game. So the project has all of the assets that I'm using, whether I'm using them in the scene or not. Um, and uh, as I was saying earlier, that all of this stuff in my project has to be re-imported and re, um, sort of re-evaluated by Unity every time I switch platforms to build. So I really want to keep this. I want to keep this down. I want to keep the size of our project folder as small as I can. Everything in my hierarchy, everything in the world is a game object. A game object is the elemental particle of a Unity game. Everything that's in the scene has to be a game object. And a game object at its base is a very simple piece of data that we call a transform. A transform contains position information and we've got three axes for that. We've got an X, we've got a Y, we've got a Z. Uh, we've got a rotation around three of these axes as well, around the X, around the Y, around the Z and we have scale in three directions. If you've done any world building with the world building tools in Unity, I mean, I mean Altspace, and you've clicked on one of those gear icons for something that you've put into a world, you've seen this. You've seen these values. You'll see the transform for that object that you're working with, and the transform that you see in the world for that object corresponds to the same coordinates in Unity. So if I want to know where to place something, I can look at the transform for a, any game object in Unity and see where that point is in my template. And those same values are going to work if I place that object with my world building tools in Altspace. So this is a pretty useful thing to uh, keep track of. I use it a lot of times if I'm placing links or if I'm placing specific pieces of, of, of objects that I want, maybe something that I want exactly on a wall, I can place a game object, an empty game object in my Unity scene, stick it where I want, copy down its transform, and then just translate those values over into alt space into my world building tools, bada bing, it's right where I want it to be, and generally the right size. Now, one big difference between what we have in Unity and what we have in the uh, Altspace world building tools is that in Unity we have three values for scale. So I can scale things non-uniformly in Unity. I can make it longer, wider, taller, shorter, whatever I want to with it. 
but when I get it into the um, the alt space world builders, I only have one value for scale. So that's a big difference between building something in the template and building something in the world building tools is I may not be able to uniformly, I may not be able to scale something in a non-uniform way. A cube is always going to be a cube. And if I need a cube to be so wide, it's also going to be so tall and so deep. I can't make a narrow, skinny, long cube. It has to be cube shaped if I'm building it in all space. Yes, there's a hand raised. Bernie, you had a question. Well, I guess not. Okay. <laughs> Do you have a question, Anthony? Yeah. Let me... Uh... Yeah. Uh... When you say uh, to build, or every time you build a different platform, it has to redo a lot of stuff. Uh, yep. In that case, do you suggest turning on only build for Windows as opposed to build for Android and Windows, or the alternative, just build for one platform rather than both? Is that the switching that causes? Well, you're you're going to have to you're going to have to build for both, um, because at some point you're going to have to build for both. Um, and so that switch has to happen. So it's so what you're developing. It, is it? You know, is that what you mean? It's a lot of yeah, a lot faster. Yeah. So I mean, it all depends. And let's say I'm, you know, I'm, I'm developing on a quest. I'm testing on a quest or a go, you know. And I really want to. I really got to keep that turnaround time short, right? So I could only develop for the Android side and not have to worry about doing any kind of switching of the platforms until I get it to a point where I want to let people come in. And then I have to build for both sides. Otherwise, people in Rifts, people in Indexes, or the 2D client won't be able to get in. Yeah. Bernie, is that a question now? Oh, wait a minute. I had you guys muted. Duh. Okay, can you talk now? <laughs> yeah. I am so sorry about that. I'm, and I was thinking, wow, what a polite, cooperative audience. And I've, I've shut you all up. <laughs> uh, so I want to go back to something you were saying earlier, which is that um, you can only in the uh, Unity tools, sorry, the, the Altspace tools, have a uniform scale. If I create an object in Unity that has non-uniform scaling on it, does it get exported correctly? Right. Yes. Yes. So if I if I scale it up in unit, let's say I give it a, a a forty eight on the x and a fifteen on the y and a point two on the on the z, that's the way it will come into alt space once I once I convert it and compile it and upload it. It's it's really only modifying that transform where the where the difference lies. Okay, great. Yeah. Has anybody else got any questions now that you can talk? Marty. Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, in, the, uh, in the Unity uh, UI, like in the, the uh, panel that I think is for scene, up at the top of it, there's a button that's like either like local or global. Maybe. Yes. Yes. No. No, it doesn't. What? What that button does, and I think the, there's a picture of the button right here, right here. <clears throat> yeah, that's the, yeah, that's the button. That's the button. Okay, so, hmm, oh, this is this is a little bit of a rabbit hole, but <laughs> so Unity, like all other 3D application, uses a three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system, um, which means that the the grid lines are rectilinear which means they're all square and evenly spaced. Um, but I can have nested transforms. I can have like a coordinate system inside of a coordinate system inside of a coordinate system. And that's what's going on in your hierarchy when you see items nested under other items. What global does is that defines which coordinate system I'm working with. So let's say 
all of these objects are a child of the world, which is the global. So X is always pointed that way. Uh, y is always pointed that way. Z is always pointed that way. Nope. Z is that way, Y is that. Unity is Y up. Um, so with global, my axes are always going to point the axes on my gizmos and the directions that I can that I can drag stuff or the directions that I rotate stuff are always going to be fixed to these three coordinate systems or these three planes. If I set it to local, now I'm working in the coordinate system whatever whatever, whatever my parent object is. So an object that's nested under another object if I set it to local, I'll be using the coordinate system of my parent instead of the coordinate system of the world. It's going to look the same. It's going to wind up in the same place. What may change is the values for my position and my rotation. So if you are doing what I was talking about doing and putting game objects in here and recording their transforms to translate that back into alt space, you want to make sure that those objects are at the top level of your hierarchy. They're not the children of any other object, because that will throw off your that will throw off your uh, your values. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Sure, absolutely. All right. Where would be a good place to go from here? So where do you get these assets? I'm going to be talking uh, in another couple of events one of these weeks. I'm going to be talking about using 3D Studio to build these worlds. And that's what I do with a lot of my stuff is I use 3D Studio to build these worlds. But you don't have to. You can find objects all over the place. You can get them from your friends. You can download them off the web. Uh, one of the best places to look since you're already using Unity is the Unity Asset Store. And there's a link to the Asset Store directly in the editor or you can go to it on the web and you can search for 3D objects, uh, the environments, models, um, and a lot of them are free. There's a wide variety of free assets on the asset store. There's some really good paid content as well. Uh, if it saves you development time, sometimes it's well worth the money to actually just buy your assets. Uh, Sketchfab is another very popular place. Um, some of the stuff on Sketchfab is monetized. Some of the stuff, a lot of the stuff on Sketchfab is free. Um, and most all of it will just go directly into Unity. You just drop it into your project folder and, and away you go. Turbo Squid has been around for a long time. It was uh, one of the very first of these sort of 3D model marketplace things. They have some free content, but mostly it's monetized. Um, it's also very well curated and uh, you get some pretty good quality stuff on Turbo Squid. Uh, these sites also have all sorts of stuff too. It's not just models, it's textures, it's sounds, materials, animations, uh, rigged models, whatever, whatever you want <clears throat> on a lot of this stuff. And then if you can't find what you're looking for on here, just do a Google search on it because there may be some dude who's got a website and he's putting models up on his own personal blog over in Germany someplace and he's got exactly the model of the TARDIS that you're looking for. You never know. So those are the places that I usually work or I look at when I'm uh, trying to find models. And you, I always look for a model before I decide if I'm going to build it or not. Unless, as was the case with this one, I had a specific look that I was going for. I know I wasn't going to find it. So uh, it was easy enough just to build it. But I always start by looking for the models because if I could find it for free, or find it cheap, it's probably going to be worth the money if it saves me a few hours or even days or weeks. Quarantine your assets. Um, and it's not because of this COVID-18 stuff. You want to quarantine your assets because if I download something from, say, the asset store, it may have scripts attached with it, it may have sample scenes attached to it, and if the prefabs that I'm using from this asset have those scripts or other dangerous boogaboos as dependencies, then those are going to go into the uh, template when I build it. 
and it's going to cause me all kinds of headaches. So I always quarantine my assets into a different folder or even into a different project. I bring them into a blank scene or I open them up in 3D Studio to see how they look, to see if uh, they're, they're complete, see if they're broken anywhere, also to see how big they are, uh, to see what the polygon count looks like. Do I have to make any changes to it? Does it have any scripts in it? Um, so that's always, that's always a pretty good um, practice is to keep that stuff separate. Just don't even let it into your project folder. Also, this is a good way to manage the size of my uh, project folder itself. So if I, if I drop this stuff just straight into my project folder, my project folder is going to grow and grow and grow and actually get filled up with stuff that I'm not using. And then that's dramatically going to um, increase that switch time be going from one platform to the other. I extract these into a separate project and then um, I'm pretty selective about the ones that I want. I want to make sure that the polygon count is low enough, that it looks good enough. And I'm, I'm comfortable, you know, making some changes to some textures or maybe tweaking some models or stuff. Um, but you want to make sure that the, the dangerous assets, and dangerous from a standpoint of breaking your alt space, um, breaking your alt space world, that is. So we're getting close to the end here. <laughs> so there's two things that you could do with your uh, Altspace uploader. I can build a template or I can build a kit. And there's some differences between the two. Building a template is actually easier than building a kit. I have less to worry about in terms of naming and there's fewer steps involved. I basically put my scene together uh, and click build and it, and it goes. If I'm going to um, build and upload, then I need to um, load up my template and then select which template that I want. And then if I do build and upload, the uploader will know which uh, template gets this uh, asset bundle once it gets built. If I'm building a kit, however, there's a bit more involved with it. First of all, the kit has to have a specific name. And that name comes from the, um, the kit definition on Altspace. So if I go to Altspace, and I've, I'm assuming everybody's already in the world's beta, uh, if, you're, if you've been whitelisted on the developers, you'll actually see an option for kits. Otherwise, there is another way that you could dig around and find where your kits are. But an easy way to do it is to hit the Create New Kit button, and that will open up the appropriate web page for you, save you all that trouble. But I have to go to the web page first to create a kit so that I can get this really long number. And you get this really long number at the end of the URL for that, for that kit. You'll see this, this really long number, and that has to be part of the kit name. And then every prefab that goes into this kit has to have that really long number as a prefix to its name. Then once I have that set up, I have to convert my game, my game objects into kit prefabs. It's not really much of a conversion. What the uploader does is it takes the prefab, copies it over to a different folder, and renames it with the appropriate name so that when it gets uploaded into the system, it goes where it needs to go. So they're, they're really... Is that really a pro or con type of thing? The question was, what are the pro or cons about using a template or a kit? It's really sort of an individual preference. And it, um, the template can't be changed. It's immutable. It's um, completely unmodifiable. But, but it also contains a different lighting system than the kits do. The kits can be randomly accessed, can be put in wherever I want, can be moved around at runtime uh, without having to recompile anything so there's a lot more flexibility with them but they also may not look as good as your template. There's other things like the non-uniform scaling that can only be done in a template, can't be done in a kit. Um, trying to think of something that would be done in a kit and not a template. I can't really think of anything. Templates have a lot more capability. If I wanted to say build some physics into my into my world. I'd be, I would do that in the template and not necessarily the kit. Um, but both can support animation. 
both can support um, sounds, a wide variety of different Unity features. There's not really an advantage of using one or the other. It's um, sort of a... That's right. Basically... Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so let's say I could do a science lab, right? And I'm I'm creating a science lab. And I'm going to be hosting uh, chemistry classes in here. The the template could be the desks, the room, the lights, the decoration, the world outside the windows, and then the kits that I would use in that in that world would be the the chemistry lab examples, oxygen atoms. Um, whatever the exercise for the day is going to be. Um, and those things I would spawn in whenever I need them, but the, the world itself would not change very much from one use to the next. Um, last thing I want to talk about, and then I will be out of time, because I have a hard three o'clock meeting in my day job I have to go to. Um, <clears throat> another common issue I want to talk about that I hear all the time, and I experience myself more often than I would like to admit, uh, you build your you build your template, you build your world, everything works, you go into alt space, it's letting you in, and as soon as I get in, I'm falling. Oh my god, I'm falling. <laughs> it just it just never stops. I'm trying, can I get the menu open and turn on flight before I respawn? No. It's it's awful. What's happened is you've entered the world into thin air. The first time you enter your world, you're going to come in at zero, 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 which is the origin of the scene. In this world, it's right about over here where my camera bot with a red sweater and red hoodie is standing. That's right about the origin of the scene. If I don't have any solid geometry under the origin when I come into the scene, then I'll fall, and fall, and fall, and fall. So the solution to that is, well, put something solid under the origin. I can create a simple cube in Unity, stick that there sometimes, Sometimes, a lot of times, I just plan my world around the origin. I just build everything with something under zero, 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 and I don't have to worry about it. Often, sometimes I miss, mm -hmm. and uh, and then um, you can always enable flight before you go in and place a spawn point over something solid, and you'll be good. Now, for something to be solid in my template, it has to it has to have a component on it called a collider, and there's um, it's almost an art unto itself with. Uh, creating and organizing and optimizing and maintaining your colliders. Um, Unity can make colliders for you. I can just tell it, generate the colliders for me. And um, sometimes it works really well, sometimes not so much. Um, also, layer 14, and we'll talk about layers more um, as these go on, but layer 14 is critical if I want to be able to teleport onto a space. Uh, the space in here, the black ob the black squares around the side. Never mind. <laughs> when I fixed the, when I fixed the lighting today, I must have broke the um, I must have broke the uh, the non teleport thing. But <clears throat> anything that I want to be able to teleport on has to be on layer 14. I can have a collider on something and it not be on layer 14. But if it's not on layer 14, I'm not going to be able to um, teleport on it, but I will be able to walk on it. All right. Well, I'm just about out of time and I'm at the uh, pretty close to the end of the prepared material. Um, got a few minutes left. Anybody else got any questions? Yes. Ultra Sloth. Hey, so um, I heard that when you're building with a kit in Alt Space, that even if you only use one uh, item from that kit, Alt Space still mm -hmm. loads the yep. entire kit. So, is there yes. a way to take the existing featured kits and upload them into like 3D Studio or, or whatever to break them down and condense them into like a smaller kit? Like no, item from. Not not in any practical sense. I mean, yeah, in 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 an ab absolutely technical sense, 
yeah, there's some techniques that I can use to get those objects out of those kits, but you're not intended to, you probably don't have permission to, uh, and it, it's, it's not a very trivial process. You really need the, the root objects to um, create your kit and, and make a performant kit. But you're absolutely right. If I use one object out of a kit in a world, whoever comes into that world has to load the entire kit, all of the objects in that kit. Um, and for that reason, when I'm building a kit that I'm planning on using in a world, I design the kit with the world so that only those objects that I want in that world come into that kit. Like, personally, I think that it's way easier to build it um, in, in Unity with kits that you could find online than it is to try to use the ones that are already here. It's, like, way easier. Plus, you got you, there's so many more that are available to you. Like, you know, there's, like, millions of stuff out there that you can use in your um, template. Just my opinion. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, and kit management is something that we can talk all day about uh, because, you know, it, it's really easy to, to run into a few people and go, hey, share some kits with me, and they share some kits with you, and you put some objects in, and your world's 200 megabytes. So, but yeah, that's a, that's a big issue. All right. Well, I'm being told that my audio is cutting out a lot, and uh, I'm going to have to cut out myself. I've, uh, I've got a hard 3 o'clock I have to go to. So I appreciate everybody showing up. Thanks for um, participating. Thanks for um, asking your questions. And, yeah? Oh, I have one more question. Uh, you might have said this, but I might have said it. When you are talking about building a kit, uh -huh. um, so after you've uploaded your kit, yep. and you've used these numbers for all of them, uh, can you edit the names once they're up in there? Nope. Through the web page or anything? Nope. Nope. Yes. That was a no. That was a no. Yeah. 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 Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks.